not many people can say they work for a 170-year-old company. And even fewer can say their organization is global with hundreds of thousands of locations. There's almost one on every corner around the globe. And each one is collecting data. Now, I can only imagine being the one in charge of data governance for that kind of scale. Today, we're talking to that person. He's the chief data officer at Western Union, and he does so much more than just data governance. Tom Mazzaferro says the role of the CDO is evolving, and Western Union is evolving with it. Everyone knows Western Union for their international money transfer service. But Tom is helping inform a major transformation of the company by harnessing data. They're working to offer more services and products across platforms. Today, we're talking with Tom about tips to retain talent, using data from customer experience to inform next-gen product development, and transforming a globally known 170-year-old household name like Western Union to be even more customer-centric. So without further ado, Let's get into it. Welcome to Truth Be Known. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Truth Be Known. We have an awesome guest today. We have Thomas Mazzaferro. He's the Chief Data Officer at Western Union. Tom, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. No, it's really, really great to have you. You've got a super interesting background. Can you tell everyone a little bit about yourself, a little bit about Western Union? I think everyone probably knows Western Union. Sure. Happy to. So uh, I started in banking. So I, my first uh, opportunity was at, a, was at a Chase. So I spent about a decade at Chase uh, doing roles across operations, technology, security lending, finance, credit risk, and then, um, and then also data. Uh, after that or so, I decided to uh, make a change, and I went and became the uh, head of data and analytics at HSBC. Then at HSBC, I actually had three different roles. I then moved into my second role, which was the uh, head of stress testing and solvency. So with the, all of our different portfolios, all of our different assets, and actually then coordinated with all of our different regulators across uh, 64 different countries to run our stress test. So Many of you know about the CCAR test in the U.S. Well, we have to do 32 of those different tests. CCAR is just one in the U.S. And then uh, as a third role, I then moved to be the uh, CDO of the U.S. Bank, which is then uh, about a year and a half there. And then I moved on to then be the CDO here at Western Union. And uh, to your point, Western Union is a very interesting company. I think it's one of the really, truly only global companies. We operate in 200 countries around the world. We have about 150 million customers that we service every every single year. And on top of that, we actually help them with their family and their livelihoods. So we allow them to send money around the world to their family and friends and allow them to, you know, send that, send that as we call it, love, right? Money, right, to uh, to their family and friends to help them live and to uh, excel in each of the different countries and things that, that they want to do. That's amazing. And I'd say... I can't think of a single person who hasn't seen a Western Union, sent money, received money. I I can't think of a single person or family that hasn't been touched in one way, shape, or form by Western Union. So you are, right, there probably aren't very many more companies, maybe Coca-Cola, that's (laughs) more global (laughs) than Western Union. Yeah, you know, for sure. The really interesting piece is, I get to your point, in many many countries, we are actually on, on every every corner right, where you look. And uh, to your point, not many companies have that opportunity. So we have over 550,000 locations around the world. And if you compare that to a bank, for example, they have between you know five and six thousand. So to put it into scale, you know, our reach and the things that we do really is at a global level, which is amazing. Now that that's. Amazing and completely insane thinking about the scale of that. And I think about your role as CDO and the amount of data that must be going through hundreds of thousands of locations across every country, nearly every country on the planet that are just happening all the time. And, you know, the things get people get really upset about are money <laughs> and that not working the way we, we expected. Yeah, you know that is definitely a a piece of the puzzle we want to make sure we solve for our customers, right? Obviously, it's uh, it's their money. We're just helping them facilitate the movement from 
one country to another country, right? But uh, but but obviously everyone uh, uh, wants to make sure that money is always safe and secure. That's something that, that we do pride ourselves in. That uh, you know everything that we do, we want to make sure that the money that that is their hard earned money, right, is being sent and sent with care, and it's it is being safe and secure with us, and then being given then to uh, to your friend or family or loved one, wherever they may be around the world. I definitely want to dig into all of the things that are happening in your day to day at Western Union, but I think it's so interesting the path that you've taken going from starting in the banking sector and being at JP Morgan, going to HSBC and having this just non traditional. Is that, I don't know if there's any traditional ways to get to a chief data officer, but I'd love to hear about. Why Why the transition into data? And then who first went to you and said, Tom, you know what? I think you should take this job. <laughs> so uh, it's really interesting. When, you, when you're in the business and you're in operations and you're, and you're helping to drive those operational functions, right, to support any product or any customer for that matter, you really start to understand the value and the importance of data. And what I found in my career is that data really is the lifeblood of any company. So without having data and data that's high quality and uh, that's able to uh, uh, be sent in a seamless way, you're going to have customer experience problems wherever you look. So it's really about how do you make data empower your organization? empower your company, empower your services and your products. And that's what really interested me is, uh, you know, whether it was in banking, uh, credit risk, financials, operations, whatever it may be, I quickly found out that, wow, you know, data is really what makes things work or not work. <laughs> so why don't I go and make sure it works holistically, right? So that's what really helped me, you know, you know, think through my career choices and, and my opportunity is that that was a great, uh, uh, a great way to really drive and help to move a company forward by making sure that data works for them and not against them. And the really interesting piece to your point is I have a whole bunch of experience across other business functions, operations, finance, uh, risks, and so forth, which actually helps me understand better what the business teams are asking for because I was in their shoes before. So I know what they need. So as they taught me and walk through what their requirements are or what they're looking for, I'm one of the people that help cut the dots between the technology teams and the business teams to say, here's what they really want and why they want this and how we actually use data to enable it holistically. That's amazing. And how? what advice do you have for someone in a similar role as you or even a different role? I love what you said about data is the lifeblood. This is how you're going to have a great customer experience and have this customer 360. The way you describe it and having the business insight and the technical insight is so unique. What advice do you have for other people who want to get there, who want to have data be the thing that powers a business forward versus the thing that holds us all back. So the really important piece that I can say is never stop learning. That's the first thing. The amount of change and pace in the industry holistically right, has just accelerated and evolved so much over the past decade, even the past five years, actually. right? And it continues to accelerate. And the reason why that's, that's so important is that you need to constantly be learning and understanding how the trends and how the world is evolving because you need to then evolve your strategy, evolve your approach, right? So I think that's the number one thing. You have to always keep learning and keep understanding how do these new trends apply to your business and how do you then take those trends and apply them to your business to move things forward. That really is the overall key in my mind. At Western Union, I can only imagine you have more data sources than I could possibly think of. What what kind of data are you working with? What are you doing on a day-to-day basis? How are you taking all of this to really empower the rest of the business? Yeah, so it's really interesting. Uh, as mentioned before, the overall industry for financial services and payments have evolved quite a bit, but even the CDO role has evolved quite a bit in the last five years. So, you know, in the past, there's always been kind of two different camps, right, around the CDO role. One is the camp of governance, data governance. Second camp is then data governance and then engineering, Right, to basically allow you to enable and to build capabilities, right, and uh, and services, right, for the company. We actually here have actually thought of a third bucket. It's both governance, engineering, but also product development. The reason why that's actually evolved in that way is that what we're seeing is that since customers, since data is so important for customer experience, you need data 
to be an active part or leading in some cases the next gen in product development of your, of your company. So what we actually have done is actually started to build a data product or, organization and started to actually now go and build and engineer new products for the customer through the CDO organization, where every product we build is actually then data enabled through insights, machine learning, and AI. So we think about customer experience from the start rather than at a later point in time. I feel like this is this utopian world where it's, I know what's going on with the customer. I know what they care about. I know what they don't care about. And by the way, if you make this thing, we can make the customer happier. We can sell them a new product. It sounds like that's this sort of world that you're able to build right now. That's exactly right. And and it's been you know an evolution. And it seems to be an evolution within our company because it's a different way to think through the customer experience and the product and the life cycle, because in, in the past, right, they, they didn't have all those insights and those analytical capabilities at their fingertips. Now that we do, you can build a product for what you're hearing from the customer on feedback and through their experiences. But on top of that is once they start engaging with the product, you also have that insight at your fingertips where you can then make a change or a, a, a tweak very quickly and continue to improve on that experience holistically, right? It really is the ability to move in an agile way and being able to leverage data to really help to transform and evolve the business in a very fast and transformational way. It's amazing. Are there things you can tell us about how you've been able to use data to transform the business and dig deeper into those things? Sure. So I'll give you a simple example. So we have actually just announced recently at our earnings announcement that we're actually looking to start launching new products for our customer. That includes uh, a now a digital bank and a, and a banking experience for our customer, right? Uh, in the past, we've basically been very transactional, right, in our customers. Now we're moving to more of a, of a uh, customer relationship with our customer. And what's really important there is then that requires multiple touch points, multiple interactions, actually in many cases, actually having a conversation with the customer, right, through omni-channel chat and so forth, and then being able to provide our next best offer or what they're looking for in a timely fashion. That's a really big transformational shift for our company, where in the past we basically have primarily offered one product being money transfer, and it's been very transactional, right? Now we're offering multiple products, and we're having that customer engage with us on multiple products and services and being that more of that consumer ecosystem going forward. That is really how we're trying to transform the company and to better service our customers going forward. That's awesome. And there's so many interesting things in there because, and remind me, how old is Western Union? Oh, we're actually celebrating our 170th year this, uh, this year. So it's uh, been... For sure, a very long-standing you know, um, a company, and on top of that, you know, a brand that, that is just known worldwide. Absolutely. So you are the chief data officer at a 170-year-old company, and I, data has not been at the center of this company for 170 years. There wasn't data 170 years outside of probably paper receipts that somebody was making sure, and it's really interesting to listen to you talk about this and to listen to you talk about how you were transforming a 170 year old business, coming up with new products and doing this based on, well, this is what people want and this is what people need. Yeah. It's actually been a very uh, fun journey internally. So, uh, you know, being able to help the organization understand that this is an evolution Right. And it really is transforming how we today service and provide products to our customer. And based upon our research, they've been asking for this and they're giving us permission to sell it to them. The demand's there. They're asking for it. You have to give it to them. So I think, you know, the really important piece here is that when you see other large institutions like the Amazons or the Apples, what's the basis of their, their overall success? It's making a product that is convenient, simple, and easy to use. We're going to start applying those same principles now as we look to basically launch new products and services to our customers. You make it simple and convenient and easy to use, you're going to get customer adoption. That's been shown over the last decade. And it shows that, that if you can help improve and make their lives easier, they're going to come to you. And that really is the foundational pieces of how data is now focusing on that customer experience going forward. 100%. And you were using this data that you have and so much rich data for, to provide these insights to, in so many ways, change the 
future of one of the oldest businesses out there and build this really bright future that also makes people happy. And you said love instead of money earlier too. Send love. Absolutely. It's just what it is, right? That's exactly what it is. People, you know, so some, so in some cases, right, this money is helping to feed their family, helping to pay their bills, pay their rent, pay their, you know, uh, help send their child to school. I mean, if that's not love, I don't know what is. Oh, you're completely, completely right. And now if there's ways to have products that are actually going to make this easier for people to help send a child, help send their kid to school or feed their family back home is an incredible thing. And I love that you're using all of this data and all of the insights you have to really build this great experience. Yeah, it's uh, it's just a start. We have a lot more to go and a lot more to come. But uh, what, what, what we've come from the last year to now has already been a pretty large transformation itself. But from my standpoint, it's just a start. We have so much more that we can do and offer to, the, to our customers into the world to really help improve their experiences, right, and, and their interactions holistically. And I know you talked about another area of the role of the CDO around data governance. And I think about Western Union. It's not just data. It is, it's money. It's livelihood that's going back and forth. And I could imagine how important data governance is in those situations and also making sure you have have uh, accuracy and visibility into what you're doing becomes even more important there than probably in a lot of other industries. Yeah, so obviously we provide federal services, right? And that for us today, this is money transfer, sending money from a person or a business to another person or business, right? And what's really important about that, to your point, is we need to make sure your money is secure and safe. And as part of that, we need to make sure that our data is is obviously secure, safe, and clean, right? Because that is the overall foundation and base of the actual movement of money across borders and from entity to entity and person to person. So it is really important, right, to make sure that we treat our, our data as an asset and we think through how do we need to make sure that we are taking this this asset, this, this information, this data that is the lifeblood of our company and making sure that it's being cared for and treated, right, uh, and improved holistically, right, as we go forward in our overall journey. Absolutely. And if you don't have that degree of trust in your data that this is good and accurate. You can't run your business without that. You're absolutely right. It, it becomes a, uh, this is where data will become a hindrance rather than a enabler. So it's actually at the uh, the core of all, of all things we do around data. Going back to, to data governance, um, I find data governance super interesting. I don't know if everyone else does, but I find it really interesting because it is the, the thing if we get wrong, if you get data governance wrong, if you get uh, if you've untrusted data, that is the thing that is going to hurt your company the most. It's worse. It's almost worse than a slowdown is bad data. Yeah. So to your point, making sure that it's accurate and clean is really important. And once you lose that trust in the data that you're getting and what it's telling you, it's very hard to earn that back. And that's for obviously all of our internal right uh, stakeholders, as well as our external stakeholders. Which is why having that information and having the data that is properly governed and with the right oversight and with the right controls truly is a foundation that not just Western Union, but any company can live without. So I can imagine you have to make a ton of decisions in your role at, uh, at Western Union. And the decisions you make legitimately impact millions of lives. No pressure at all on that, by the way. So what's uh what's the most difficult decision you've had to make in your your current role? Wow, what a uh, what a good question. Uh, you, you know the um, the most important piece actually isn't around the the processes or the flows. It's actually on the people side, right? From my standpoint, is uh, being able to make sure you have the right team, the right talent the right motivation, and the people that, that trust each other, right? So having a highly optimal, highly efficient, highly proficient team that uh, that can work together and partner together because it's impossible for one person to do everything. We all know that, right? You're only as strong as, a, as your weakest link, right? And the team really is what drives holistically, right? Transformation, change, monetization itself. So from my standpoint, you know, the toughest call that I have to make every day or uh, is basically is how do I make sure that I'm 
enabling my team, helping my team, upskilling them, training them, and making sure that they are in the best spot to work in an optimal way and be efficient and provide the best support and and customer experience for our customers holistically. And then outside of Western Union, what's the hardest decision you had to make during your career? Oh my goodness. Uh, so I'll have to say this probably goes back to my uh, to my Chase days. So we had to make some pretty uh, tough decisions when we were actually doing the Wall Street Mutual and Chase merger and integration. So um, the slogan we had back there was one plus one equals 0.9. So how do you truly find efficiencies, right? through an acquisition and and it really it really pushes you know a lot of people to think out of the box and really uh try to determine by bringing these two mass entities together how do we actually operate more efficient more more efficiently as one so that to me was was by far the hardest and how how did you approach that how did you approach finding one plus one equals 0.9 <laughs> So, so uh, as part of that equation, the first thing I get to look at is waste, right? What is uh, what is waste in both organizations, and let's remove that. Then the next one is okay, you know, where's the overlap, right? And of the over- overlap, which processes are better? Those are the easy choices, right? The hard ones become okay. Now I know which processes are better. Is the process optimal? It's not optimal, then you got to go make it optimal, right? And and that's how you get to the point nine. All right. So, so it really was basically those three different mental processes to get to to a place where you can drive that efficiency at that at that type of level. And it's interesting what I'm I'm hearing from you talking about that. In some ways, is like to your role at now. It's it's you've just been doing transformation in different forms and areas. It sounds like for your entire career, whether it's transforming processes there or transforming the role of data and customer experience at Western Union. Yeah, uh, it just to your point in different domains, right? But what's really interesting is that uh, is is that if you're not transforming and modernizing at this at this point in the industry or in, in, in your career and what's happening holistically, you're actually falling behind your your competitors, right? And you know, the interesting uh, quote that I always recall from my past uh, bosses and leaders was this is the slowest pace you will have in your career. And I always tell my team, and they're like, what do you mean? But then when you fast forward a year and you ask the question, and like, if I, just remember back a year ago, had this discussion, and you were like, I can't go any faster. Look at what you're doing now. And they're like, yeah, it was so slow a year ago. And it's just, it's all about perception and where you stand today and how you could continue to evolve your thinking, but how you can always continue to accelerate and find efficiencies and move faster holistically, right? As a, as an overall team. Uh, the, the quote that I always tell my team is actually two things. One is that if you come work for my team, you'll learn more in a year than you were anywhere else in five years. And the second quote, right, is that uh, you, need to be, you need to become comfortable being uncomfortable. And that's really around the acceleration, pace to change, and always looking to evolve and transform. That is amazing. Can I can I steal that quote from you? And of course, of course, not not trademarked yet. <laughs> okay, okay. I I'm, hmm, I'm like, do I give you credit for this? If I'm like, what Tom told me is <laughs> like, you're lucky we're going so slow right now, and and it's. So such a great point of the rate of change that's happening right now. It also makes the industry that we work in so interesting and exciting because everything is changing. You have to grow and transform and evolve. And you don't seem like the kind of guy that sits there and goes, let me just sit and hang out for a little bit. Status quo seems to be working. <laughs> yeah, we are definitely not a status quo uh, organization here, you know, uh, I always challenge my teams and and I'll tell you what, you know, it's it's always challenging yourself. How can you continue to find ways to do more and to do things better? Uh in and you know, the I'm sure the uh ask that all of us get from our executives are how you do, how do you do more with less? Mm-hmm. Right? And it's, it's it's really the same construct. How do you continue to basically move faster and transform with what you have today? It is. And it it sounds like you'd mentioned the people part earlier and it's rethinking and it's process and it's technology that let us do more and often do more with less. You know, I've run marketing for a lot of my career. We are often asked to do more with less. It's what we do. 
But a big piece of that is, and it sounds like just from talking to you, and I could easily see this, is inspiring the team and giving them a a vision. And this is how we're going to transform a business. This is how we're going to grow impact. Those types of rallying cries get people excited and willing to do more and seeing a future they didn't know was possible. You're absolutely right. And and this is around leadership, right? Is is how do you make sure that you're always motivating your teams? But how do you also make sure the teams are operating in a way that's that's efficient? And you know, people are always like, well, how do you make sure they're always getting hundred percent from the team? And I think that's the wrong approach actually. Trying to get hundred percent. If you're getting hundred percent all the time, you're gonna burn your team out over time. Mm-hmm. Right? It's how do you, to your point, motivate them. Right, to really drive that that transformation and the modernization and that and that improvement in speed, right, in a different way than they they actually are interacting today, and as part of that, it's also being able to have them have, have the ability to go on vacation, mm-hmm. to reset, to allow them to be ten time with their family, right, and and you know to, to tell my team you must take vacation over the next month. You look burned out. You look exhausted. You know you've had a tough month. Like Go take time off with your family. Find a week. Find two weeks. Go do it, because I know that if we don't do that and they don't get the chance to rest, relax, and recharge, then I'm actually going to have you know a lot of attrition on my hands. But on top of that, the team will become basically then then uh, um, non optimal from an ability to actually go and transform and move forward quickly. You're you're completely right, and it's the the holistic approach to people versus the how do I get the most out of you right now? For sure, right? And and that really is the long game, right? And that's how you retain a talent. Absolutely. Right? Otherwise, a talent is, is going to go somewhere else. I can speak for myself and for my team and for myself personally. It's been harder to take that time off in the last you know year and a half because where do we go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, COVID really has uh, put a, uh, a wrench in many people's vacation plans, right? Holiday plans. But but even if you do a staycation, right, or if you go take your your family to a day trip, you know, but it doesn't have to be, you know, a historical vacation holiday spot somewhere exotic, right? It can be somewhere, you know, close at home. But just having that that break from work though, and being able to really let your mind just reset and recharge is really important. It is. Otherwise, we are not. We're not going to be able to solve the right problems. We're not going to see things the right way. And I agree with you. It is our responsibility as leaders to remind our employees and remind our teams and often our colleagues of that because every fire is really important. I can't leave. I have to finish this. I cannot take this time off. And we can always take time off. For sure. For sure. I think, you know, to your point, being able to have that overall management, right, that basically allows you, enables you to do that is also really important. And we're actually very lucky here at Western Union where we have that that type of support as well from the top down. That's really awesome. Well, as you think about your role as, as CDO, and this world is changing rapidly, data is growing at an exponential rate. What do you see the biggest changes in the next, call it five years? I really do see this shift where the role of a CDO doing just governance, it's going away. It's going away pretty quickly, actually. Governance is part of every CDO's role, but it's not the only thing that should be part of it, right? So if you think companies are going to see that now. On the second hand, I also see that uh, that the executive team and the business team is starting to see the true value of data, especially as things move to more of a digital type of engagement model with your customers. And that actually tells you about your customer experience and actually enables you holistically on that customer experience, right? So um, so that is really where it becomes quite quite important, right? So really the next five years really basically two things. I think one of which is the CDO as a actual role in North Edition will take even a higher, a larger step forward in the success and the transformation of, of the company to come, especially as things move even more to a digital standpoint going forward, right? And, and, and on top of that, as the business teams and the executive teams really start to understand how data really is a key part, right, in the customer experience, the journey, and how the product actually is being sold, I really see this data product concept, right, of being able to enable these 
the products and services that the that company sells to its customers, insight enabled, right? Machine learning enabled and so forth. So that so that we actually can provide that personalized customer experience going forward. So do you have any advice for a first time CDO? <laughs> Uh, hang on, it's gonna be a, a, a wild ride. <laughs> uh, but uh, in all reality, I, I think it's you know always um, continue to learn and uh, definitely get uh, plugged in with a few of your peers, right? And other and other companies that can help and, and also be a sounding board as well for your ideas. I um, have learned so much from you during this podcast about really just interesting, innovative ways that. CDOs could and should be using data and how it, to your point, it's not about governance. I mean, yes, governance is extremely important, but there's so many more things that it's empowering the business. I um, don't normally do this, but I want to ask you a bunch of advice questions for other CDOs, because if I was a CDO, I would be sitting here going, Tom, just tell me the answer. Why do I, why do I have to go figure it out? I think Tom knows the answer. So when you first said, I think we can use data to help, um, come up with ideas for new products. How did you, how did you do that internally? Who did you talk to? How did you start to build this out and start to build this idea out? Yeah. You know, really as part of that, I actually talked to uh, my manager, the, uh, the overall president of all our products in our platform and uh, really, you know, opened up the idea with her. And, you know, I mentioned before, I'm very lucky where I have the, the executive support, right. To really be able to think through and expand and to try these new ideas, right. And be able to fail fast and, and be able to modify and to tweak the approach and continue to go forward. So with that, we actually made quite a bit of progress and, you know, as as he started to go through and we saw things starting to really take hold and actually accelerate things that we're doing. It really basically was, this makes a lot of sense. Let's go faster. So that's, that's really how it took off. But, you know, as part of that, you really do need the overall support from the executive team or at least a portion of the, the executive team to really make sure that uh, you, you can have that air cover to really try something new and, and really put something to market. And if I'm, trying to figure out how to use data for customer 360 to get better insights. Where do I start? So I think what we start is what are you going to use to really be able to view that customer holistically? All right. So uh, we actually went on the path of using a tool called Tamer. Um, Tamer actually, you know, is a great, a great platform for us to enable the ability to see our customer 360. Um, and then being able to then uh, teach the model uh, how the model learn right, holistically and improve to really be able to grasp that uh, that that, that holistic view of the customer, but also be able to plug that in to operational systems. So the systems become then aware of a customer and all their integrations and touch points and their and what their experience was right through the channel becomes very important because whether you're in the call center or whether you're in an operations, customer care um, experience, or if you're at a retail location or if you're on the digital channel, the customer it's, uh, itself, that individual doesn't doesn't forget. They know what their experience has been, no matter what channel they were working with you on, right? So, but the problem is that in many companies, those channels are not connected. So we cannot actually, you know, be able to interact with that customer with that knowledge. With the customer 360, you actually can have that knowledge and then be able to then plug it into our operational systems going forward as well. If I'm having issues with my data and I need to fix my data governance again, like where do I start? What should I do? Just tell me how you did it so I can just go copy this. <laughs> So I think step one is really talking to the actual business teams because uh, what you actually will hear is their pain points. And in many cases, the pain points are actually data quality problems. And that, that to me is really where you should start because then you are also solving a business problem. And then by doing that and you actually improve that, that actual business team or that executive's issue, they then become your biggest fan. <laughs> how you can help, help you then move things forward as well. So you preemptively answered my my next question, which was going to be, how do I build a better relationship with the business? Solve their problems. It's that simple. No, it's not. <laughs> yeah, it's not rocket science. And when you say it, it's like, and again, talk to people, figure out what their problems are. But that's awesome. I feel like I'm now suddenly getting a bunch of free Tom consulting, so I probably should let you go. <laughs> um, but we do like to end all of these with a bunch of quick decision questions. Okay. So they are 
just that questions to answer quickly. Don't overthink it. Uh, you ready? Yep. Sure. What is one talent or skill that's not on your resume? Uh, I used to be a national swimmer. Really? In college. Oh, that's yep. awesome. Oh, is, is there a stroke that you were good at? I should know this. Uh, freestyle and then, uh, and then backstroke. You know, another, another interesting fact is I also, uh, am a, a certified, uh, diver as well. Wow. All right. So you're the guy that we want to be in the water with. In the water. I'm, I'm your guy. <laughs> awesome. If you weren't working in data, what would you be doing? I love financial services. So I'd be somewhere in the, uh, in the, um, in the banking side, whether it be, uh, Selling to clients or doing some type of risk management or financial management. What is your favorite book, TV show, something that you've been binging lately? Oh, lately. My goodness. So uh, I'm a big net, big fan on Netflix. Mm-hmm. I love Netflix. So uh, I like all the Netflix homegrown yep. shows, right? That basically produce themselves. I'm a sucker for those. Um, what have I been doing lately? I feel like it's been so busy at work. I haven't, to be honest with you, been watching so much. But, uh, but, but I am definitely a big fan, though, of Netflix. I read something about this where Netflix uses data to help figure out what types of shows to make. And they look at what are the shows people are watching and engaged in and spending more time in and based on the data that they find that's what helps them decide maybe we should make this type of tv series so very interesting for sure they do a good job they got they got me hooked same same (laughs) part of me thinks i've watched everything on netflix (laughs) because they'll come out with a show and i will go through the entire series (laughs) I know how you feel. Partially, I was like, is there something new that I've missed? <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, last question. Um, what would be your top ad- piece of advice for yourself 10 years ago? Oh, wow. Um, I think on that one, it really is uh, being able to really think about talent and how do you enable talent to really transform a company. You know, um, that kind of hit me about three or four years ago. I was at HSBC, and then, I, you know, you start basically, you know, when you meet someone, you put them into your memory bank, and you're like, oh, this person's really good for this role, right? And then five years later, you have that role, you're like, oh, I'm going to give him a call or give her a call, right? Um, you know, I think, I think that's that to me is really, really important. And it really helps to drive, you know, a highly efficient teams, right, you want to bring on, right, to your department. So that to me, I think, is, is the number one, is being able to really – you know, have an eye for talent. I could not agree with you more on that. This has been absolutely awesome. I hope all of our listeners got as much out of this as I did. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Great seeing you. You too. Truth Be Known is brought to you by Talent. A leader in data integration and data integrity, Talent enables every company to find clarity amidst the chaos. Talent Data Fabric brings together in a single platform all the necessary capabilities that ensure enterprise data is complete, clean, compliant, and readily available to everyone who needs it throughout the organization. Learn more at talend.com. That's T-A-L-E-N-D.com.